Welcome to our lecture online. Here again, we're going to use our three different techniques on the same problem, but now we realize that we first must, yes, factor out a common factor. You can see that we can factor out an A and then end up with a trinomial that's a little bit easier to deal with. So here, this can now be written as A times 8A squared minus whoop, 25A plus 3 messing up here. Again, right here, we can write this as a times 8a squared minus 25a plus 3. And here also, we can factor out a, so a times 8a squared minus 25a plus, oop, plus 3. I'm jumping the gun here. Okay, notice that in each case, obviously, since it's the same problem, no matter what technique we use, we should always factor out a common factor and then factor what's remaining. So in our first example here, we're going to write this as the product of two binomials. So this is a times, but notice to get a a squared, we can do that in various ways. We can have 8a times a, or 4a times 2a, or 2a times 4a, or 1a times 8a. There's the different ways in which we could write the first two terms in order when we multiply, we get the first term back. But notice that the middle term is a fairly large number, minus 25a, and if we use small factors here, there's no way we'll ever get a very big middle term. So, by just guessing, I would assume that starting out with 8a and a, we're most likely to end up with a really big middle term. Again, you need one of these coefficients, so numerical coefficients be really big, in order to get something as big as a minus 25 as a middle term. So sometimes by looking at the numbers and kind of guessing, you realize you most likely get the correct factors by starting out like this. Now notice that here we have a negative sign and a, there we have a positive sign. That means both of these must be negative. And now again, to get a minus 25, you want the biggest number possible because notice we have a, a 3 there. The only way to get a 3 is to multiply a 3 times 1 or a 1 and a 3. But I would put the 3 over there because 3 times 8 gives us 24. That gets us really close to 25. So even though we could technically put a 3 there and a 1 there and a 1 there and a 3 there, I would say a 3 there and a 1 there is my best guess to get the right combination. Now notice what happens. I get rid of this. Notice 8, 8 times a negative 3 is a negative 24a. Minus 1 times a is a minus 1a. Together, minus 25a. That is the correct factored form of our original problem. So just realizing that by looking at the numbers, and notice we have a very big middle term, this term times this term will get you as close as possible to that big middle term. Here we're going to do the same thing as we did before by writing this trinomial as a polynomial of four terms. We're going to split the middle term into two middle terms, and we're going to do that by saying that the product is equal to the product of these two numbers, which is 24, and the sum is equal to a minus 25. So this should give us a hint of how to rewrite this. So this is equal to a times 8a squared plus 3, and then we have two middle terms which need to be negative, and we need to find the numerical coefficients of those two middle terms. The product is 24, and the sum is minus 25. So that means that a minus 24 multiplied times a minus 1 gives us a positive 24. And when I add them together, I get a negative 25. So the numbers are going to be a 24 and a 1. Now I'm going to group these together in groups of 2 and factor out what's common. So this can be written as a times. Here when I factor out an 8a, I'm left with an a minus 3, and here if I factor out a minus 1, I'm left with an a minus 3. And then if I look at these two factors, notice I can factor out an a minus 3, so this can be written as a times a minus 3, and I'm left with an 8a minus 1. 
And that's the factored form of our original problem, just like we had before. Here we're going to use the FOIL method. And again, we can think a little bit ahead, knowing we have a very big middle term, which means that I probably want to have an 8 and a 1. And over here, I want to have, since I have a, a negative sign here and a positive sign, these two numbers must be negative. And I need a, as big a number as possible. So to get 3, I can multiply it 1 and 3, or a minus 3 and a minus 1. But notice, since I want a very big middle term, the negative 3 times a positive 8 gets us really close. So I'm betting that this will be the correct combination, these two numbers and those two numbers. And notice when I multiply, 8 times a negative 3 gives me negative 24. 1 times a negative 1 gives me minus 1. That adds up to minus 25, which is the middle term I'm looking for. And so I found the right combination. So this can be factored as follows. 8 times 8a minus 1 times 1a times a minus 3. Or minus 3, I should say. So a minus 3. And notice, here's the factored form of our original problem. The three methods, any one of them is good. You just have to pick the one you feel most comfortable with. Many people like the FOIL method the best, and it's usually the quickest, and that is how it's done.